You welcome back to Eyewitness News, and this is the point blank segment of the program. It's 25 minutes to the top of the hour. My name is Selom Adonu. And tonight on Point Blank is the general himself. The general of Ghanaian politics. The NDC General Secretary, Johnson Asidu Inketia. Is my guest for the next 25 minutes. Hello, good evening, um, Honorable, or, I mean, Johnson Asidu Inketia. Thank you very much, and good evening to the listeners. Yes, I'm, I'm sure the listeners are happy having you in the <laughs> studio because a number of issues have come up concerning the NDC and, and its recent comments on, on certain matters. But we want to delve straight into the issue of the referendum because that's most topical. Yeah. Um, the, the government, for example, uh, feels that your action, they called it a U-10, you know, was in bad faith because all along it appeared you were flowing with them, you attended stakeholder meetings, and, and you were happy with the process for them to be hit all of a sudden with this U10. Well, thank you very much. I would have been um, interested in finding out what effort or what event the government has ever organized or the MPP has ever organized to seek to seek our views, consult us about this referendum. Not a single one of them. Are, are, you, are, you, are you saying that we, we comments by the Minister for Local Government uh -huh. that there were stakeholder engagements which you attended some of the meetings? By whom? Of course, maybe the government or the ministry. Government has that, not... Uh, I haven't attended any stakeholder it, it, it event could be CSO, organized could, by it government. It could have been organized by CSO or other CSO institutions. CSO is inviting me. And government people the, who are there. Please. They have invited me, they have invited government. But for you to come out to say that we have consulted him, it's a wrong premise to begin with. Government has not consulted NDC on anything about this referendum. And that is a fact. And I'm surprised that the limited airtime they have, instead of deploying it to campaign for years and raise the issues to convince people, they are all over the place, uh, you know, blaming people here and there. Are they saying that without us, they, they by themselves cannot raise cogent arguments to convince the electorate that the path they have chosen is a good path? Yes, I think they're trying to do that, but it appears... They I mean, are not doing it. No, they are always you, 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 have, on, you have a large following, people. and, and yes. this is, you know, a 75%, percent, sure. you know, of the turnout vote sure. you want. 40% mm -hmm. turnout, 75% mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. that 40 percent yeah and so your inclusion or your agreement to be in line with mm -hmm. a certain position is mm -hmm. important but talking about consultation but, the minister said on this program mm -hmm. yesterday mm -hmm. that president akufuado consulted former president mahama on this same matter so and, why and, are you and, calling and, me and saying no, that and, I and, he appeared, <laughs> no, no and, and he appeared to to have agreed to the position that election of mmdcs and the local level on elections what, should be partisan on what occasion and at what event and at what time? No, but we, we they, they, they recently, or the they few months ago, had a meeting. I mean, the former presidents met with the president at the Flagstaff House or the Jubilee House. They, they had least, engagements. There was, there was a, a, you know, a television coverage about it. We never heard about it. No, no, we, we didn't. Or... Television didn't cover the discussion. Please, I cannot uh, peep into private discussions. We are talking about... A referendum which should not be a private discussion. Mm. We are talking about a referendum. And if you want to engage us, you know how to engage us. Mm. And I'm telling you that nobody either in government or as a party, on no occasion has anybody engaged us. And so the, the earlier they stopped beating about the bush, the better it will be. Because, you know, this is a party and a government that is not interested in engaging the other side at all. Mm. They choose to do what they want to do. And about you can go to hell if you choose. That's what their attitude has been. Having, they, were you not here when we were seeking to engage them to, to, to uh, if, if you like, straighten things about the national identification? Did they budge? Were they not here when we were talking about limited voter registration? And we said that, look, 
Electoral Commission is saying they are preparing to register 300,000 people. The statistics they indicate that there are, uh, you know, 1.7 million people qualified to register. And yet they are insisting on this. Can we meet and straighten this? In? Did they budge? So, so what you, are you so talking you, so about? You see this they, as you need to pay them back? It is not about paying back. I'm establishing the fact that they are not a group that is interested in engaging anybody. Hmm. So don't let them come and be telling stories about we engaging and are, are never able to tell us on what occasion they engage us, at what time, and what venue. They will not be able to talk about it. And I, I feel disappointed in the, in the media people they meet. Because mm. if somebody is alleging that uh, there is a backstabbing, we did this meeting, we reached this agreement, you know better. You know how to probe to find out whether they are lying to you or they are speaking the truth. And yet you ignore that one and you call us and you're asking us, are we backstabbing them? If all the media would do in the, uh, in the democracy is just to listen to people without doing any minimum uh, checks and then we'll carry whatever they have said as if it's a pipeline to another side and then we will also give our side, then no cross-checking, then you go and give it to the other side, then uh, I'm afraid uh, we, are, we, are, we are doing something but, short but, of uh, yes, our role in yes, the democracy. Well. I, think I want point, you... Mm -hmm. To find out from either the minister, John Boadu, or President Akufuado, mm. to tell us that we engage NDC on this serious matter of decentralization. These were the meetings we held at these venues at this time. Mm. And that these were the conclusions we reached. Mm. Then, if you bring us that information and you want us to react, we will then react. So far, nobody, all the media engagement people have, uh, you know, sought to do with me. Nobody is able to tell me that the people are saying they engage you at this venue, at this point, or at this date. Mm -hmm. Nobody, not a single one. Very well. But you agree that, or will you agree that mm -hmm. there were other meetings you both attended, yes. organized by other institutions? Yes. yes. And at those fora, you yes. spoke almost the same language. Is that correct? I have spoken in various languages, and there was a point where <laughs> I appear to be uh, supporting the idea. Mm -hmm. But these are, you know, the beauty of democracy is that you can change your mind. As there are you clashes, uh, you know, clashes of of opinion from which sparks of truth emanate. Because otherwise, why should there be democracy? Mm. When you go to parliament and you are beginning a debate, everybody comes from the background with which and the ideas they bring on board. It is out of the debate mm. that you come to draw conclusions. It is unfortunate that MPP, when they decided to do this, and they knew very well that they alone, maybe are by their own ways, they cannot galvanize the 75%, and therefore they needed everybody. Mm. Wouldn't it have been better in the national interest to come, seek engagement, we sit together, explore the issues together, look at the Constitution, because there, everything that the Constitution has provided in one clause has roots in other areas. Mm. So if you just pick one article of the Constitution and you think that it covers local government, so when I amend it, then I'm uh, uh, bingo, I'm there. You are wrong. Very well. So this, uh, you know, introduction of multi-party system in uh, local government. It is a separate subject from the, the issue about whether DC should be elected or not. Very well. So, and so, so the let, president let, let's explore, and the party yes. sought to, you know, confuse the issues. Very well. So, so now let, let's explore the issues better, I mean, from yeah. the NDC point of view. Yeah. So you said, or you, you are calling on your people to vote a no. No. On the Zimba 17. Because yes, we, we what's the basis? Crisis. What's the basis of that call? We know that yes, we generate crisis. How? Because this uh, idea of a referendum has not been thought through properly at all, hmm. and we don't want to have another Brexit on our hands. The issue of referendum because has been on the drawing board for a while. It was in the MPP manifesto. It could I be think there you, you when you about put it. a dead wood in a river for a thousand years; it doesn't become a crocodile. Hmm. So you understand that if you spend time, useful time, in engaging people to discuss and explore the issues, you can come to better conclusions. But if you go and file uh, uh, something, uh, you know, in a gazette for a thousand years, and you are not engaging anybody, you are not uh, putting together any plan, 
And you think that because it has been there for a thousand years, then therefore people have heard about it long enough. You will not get to the right things. I'm, let me tell you that. Hmm. I speak from the experience of somebody who participated in the crafting of the constitution. Hmm. And I speak as somebody who served on the local government committee that actually put this decentralization thing together. Hmm. So I know what I'm talking about. There are very serious issues. If you are not careful, we will run this nation into serious difficulties. And the clearest example is that even the talk about this referendum, see what it has done to the most sacred institution in our, in our, in our culture, that is the chieftaincy institution. Hmm. Since you were born, have you ever heard that the National House of Chiefs have been divided over any issue? in such a way that the media is playing this thing out and it's like the whole National House of Chiefs is on fire. Because National House of Chiefs is a pillar in the peace architecture of this country where we, the you know, politicians, can mess around. But the good thing is that every politician is a subject of one stool or the other. Mm -hmm. Every pastor, every professor, everybody owes allegiance to one stool or the other. So we hold the, our chieftaincy institution so sacred that when we mess around and they call us, they are able to seek peace. Hmm. Now the institution itself, by this referendum, the institution itself is on fire. So are you calling on the subjects to now go and call our overlords and, and, and try to seek peace. So it is a clear signal to you that the, 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 <clears throat> the, the steps we are taking, we are walking on a dangerous path. And we better withdraw this issue of referendum, sit together and see how to take the issues one by one, how to plan about the outcomes of the of of, of 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 a yes vote or a no vote and then to be able to put the nation together mm. i'm telling you that look the decision not to allow multi-party system in the local government level was not taken lightly mm. we studied our history we realized that when colonialism came before colonialism we had our traditional structures which were responsible for governing us at the local levels when even the British came, it didn't take them long to realize that it would be difficult to put in a structure that would go against uh, 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 the chieftaincy institution. So what did they do? They introduced indirect rule hmm. and rather use the chiefs, strengthen them and use them to govern. After independence, you have a situation where the chieftaincy institution has its structures down to the grassroots. If you want to decentralize, you have this modern uh, constitutional structures also down to the grassroots. There is the need for some interface which will fill some functions there so that the system can run better at the village level. So if you are not careful and you put two lions in one hole, mm. you are going to create a problem. That is why during Buzia's time and during other periods before now, you had the um, um, town development committees which were elected by the people, but there was a proviso that every town development committee must be headed by the chief. Mm. So there was a fusion there. Now, so when we were crafting this constitution, we said that, look, first we have seen that there has been attempt during the first republic and so to try uh, to, uh, uh, for politicians to try to penetrate the chieftaincy institution and create problems. It, the results has been very bad for us. You have a situation where chiefs will play a role in politics and then when government change, then the new government will be chasing those chiefs who played a role in the previous one. Mm. So in doing this constitution, we start and say, look, our chieftaincy institution must be protected. Let us prevent government from recognizing chiefs and government from de-recognizing chiefs because the institution is based on culture mm -hmm. and every uh, ethnic group has their own culture. So let us uh, do a constitution that will protect the institution. We did it. Yes, and then we said that don't let us 
allow chiefs also to enter politics mm -hmm. so that politicians will have a reason to come into chieftaincy. Well. Mm -hmm. And that was why we said that at the local level, these two institutions, if you allow politics down to the grassroots, and chieftaincy is also there, what will be the interface between chieftaincy and the constitutional structures? It will be problematic. So let us leave political uh, uh, party competition at a certain level, so that at the local level where the chiefs operate, they can have a means of fusing the powers there and come together to run our uh, our, our our communities. Very well, General. You know, we've spoken about this uh, thing about winner takes all. Mm -hmm. We say our politics, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's a winner take all system. Yes. And so the president, the executive president, we we we, we have mm -hmm. is too powerful yes. and, and all that. So, mm -hmm. you know, bringing multi party. Uh, or making the local assembly elections yeah. partisan mm -hmm. will provide the opportunity for the smaller parties, maybe the NDC, which is a very big, the, in fact, the biggest opposition mm -hmm. party, to also have people who will be actively involved in, 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 in the governance of the country, at least from the local level. Mm -hmm. and, and so, given your position now, how do you think we can cure this winner take all? That argument is faulty. Mm. I've heard the president and members of the MPP trumpeting this argument and say that if you have a president who wants to cure winner takes all, mm. he doesn't need a referendum to do that. Because the president has the powers now. If the president tomorrow decides that 100 DCs will be appointed from MPP, uh, NDC or CPP, is he in breach of any law? So the president must demonstrate that I am a president who wants to be a father for all. So this is what I have done. So I don't want a future president to, uh, you know, depart from what I have, I have done. So let us uh, put a law there. But instead of uh, following what Professor Tamils did, where he came, uh, decided that, uh, chief executives of certain SOEs should not be touched. They must be left to go on retirement. Uh, even chief executives of uh, district assemblies were left in office for about three months plus before they were replaced gradually and so on. This is a president who felt that I must allow other people to play, uh, to have a say. But you have President Akufuado, who right from the day the handing over took place, send his goons to go and chase people out of offices. Offices whose occupant needed not to be changed just because politicians have changed. They chase all of them out. And now you have offices that are otherwise protected by the Constitution, like, uh, we know, uh, Electoral Commission and other places. They are, they, they've chased them out. They are they, about they, chasing they, out... They, the, uh, they the, went through the process. Listen, to, uh, to, that's, to that's, get the people I'm out. saying that. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they appoint? What or who did, did they appoint to replace them? No. They are chasing the level out. They are chasing everybody out. No, so if this person, out, I mean, uh, if uh, this president comes to tell you that it is because I want to share my powers, I want to give other people opportunity. That is why I need a referendum. Ask him. Why is he chasing those who are there already, well, who, I, who are considered not to be in know, his party? I, I don't think the president is chasing that anybody the out. powers, okay, uh, leave uh, those who... was removed. Uh, listen, you leave, know, leave those... After having gone through the, the constitutional let, let, Let's procedure. put that one out. Mm -hmm. The appointments the president has made so far, mm -hmm. how many non-MPP people has he considered worthy of appointment? And even within the own MPP... He's now not concerned about the bigger family of MPP. He's concerned about his family and friends. And that is where, why even people in MPP are complaining. So if that same president comes to tell you that he wants to spread his power so everybody will benefit, but, but you it, take it with it, a picture. It, 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 it's not something, it's it's not something you politicize. And I'm telling you that this referendum will not create any, uh, uh, will not solve any winner takes all problem at all. What it is likely to breed will be to intensify the winner takes all situation. Because you see, as I sit here, if we say we should go and do unit committee elections mm -hmm. based on party, mm -hmm. it means I have to do party primaries mm -hmm. <laughs> to elect about thirty thousand persons. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do another primaries to elect about eight thousand persons for assembly. 
before you come to parliament and so on. Why, why are, are, uh, is any party, apart from the party in government, going to raise those resources? Where are we going to raise it from? So, so it's so, like so, so, the, so, the so, person so in it's government... it's also a decision or it's also an issue of resource mobilization no, from the are, political these party are, point these of are view. Some of the things that we must look at, that the biggest problem for me is that at the local level, the society is an organic whole there mm -hmm. where chiefs play their role uh, constitutional structures will play their role and so on and so on that is why every local government system develops some interface between these uh, people who are uh, you know by necessity must coexist and cohabit you have blocked chiefs from active participation in multi party elections mm -hmm. and so we have reserved the the base so that everybody who cannot participate in multipartism can still have a role to play there. Mm -hmm. Now you are extending everything down to the ground. So the chiefs cannot have anything to do with uh, local government elections. So if the chiefs are in their palaces and they are, they are making their laws and giving their edits and so on, and then the assembly and unit committees are also doing their partisan politics controlled by general secretaries from headquarters. If there is an issue where there's a disagreement, the party says that this is a party position, let's go this way. And the chiefs in the locality say that this is our land, this is what we want to do, and that will serve our interests as inhabitants of this land. Mm -hmm. When there is that disagreement, how would it uh, be resolved? How, how it about, is going to be a, a big problem. How about the argument that currently we don't have a lot of interest in the local assembly elections? Fine. You know, making it partisan mm -hmm. will make the two or the, the main political players in our country get down there mobilize people and bring in a lot more interest so that a lot more people can go out there and then make their choice as we speak now in the last but, but number the, of elections we, we struggle to even go beyond i thought that the same you know, government has said that voting is not compulsory and that is why in ayawa so 17 percent of the people voted and chose an mp has that mp been driven away from parliament it is the same government who is arguing like that. But, but, but so if you think that you want to raise the numbers, make voting compulsory. So everybody will go and participate. But to tell you what, is that, those is who that? are, those, there are countries where voting mm. is compulsory. If you want everybody to come on board, is that what we want? Wouldn't that infringe on the individual uh, liberties of citizens? So that's a different yeah, so, matter. So, so like, the, like the, tell the parliamentary and presidential elections, we know we see the turnout, we see the enthusiasm, mm -hmm. we see the interest, people mm -hmm. wanting to elect people and hold them accountable mm -hmm. at the local level we don't see that people even don't know the assembly members or unit committee people because they are just not interested so the thinking think is that, that if you make a party you that you the a parties party will get involved get down there uh -huh. mobilize people uh -huh. to vote for their candidates so when the so party doing, constituency chairman says that unit committee people like we issue three line whips and so on unit committee people this is our position on this matter and the chiefs and the all other opinion leaders in that community says that this is what we must do so that life will be improved in this thing. And the party, people are holding a whip. What will happen in that community? I mean, it's, it's a competition of ideas. We go it's in, not we, a competition we, no, we, of we, we, ideas. You are, we, are planting we, conflict. We, we it's not a competition of idea. ideas. It's not a competition. Because they are not meeting at any forum. The chiefs are precluded from participating in anything at the unit committee level because they would be seen to be participating in active party politics. Mm. So the chiefs will be in their palace. And then the unit committee and town council people feel that, well, we have our powers, we have our structures, there is no rule for chiefs here. So we can take our decisions to implement them. You are generating conflict. That's why we carefully crafted this thing in such a way that Look, there are several hundreds of chiefs who are presiding members all over the country. Mm. And apart from that, the chiefs have been appointed as DCs. And then there is a, a provision for 30% of appointees. And the chiefs also play a role in appointing people there. So you have a fusion there so that the governance at that level becomes functional. Mm. But if you are going to generate conflict, then you have you have a problem. So, so, so this no position, this position of yours, calling on your members and everybody to vote no, mm -hmm. is it conditioned on something? Is, is it anything the government can do to persuade you 
from that position? You are moving from a point as if government is right in, and we are wrong. Mm. And so we need to be persuaded from our wrong position to join government. That is where the problem comes from. And that is where MPP is making a mistake. If we need to change our system of government, we must all sit together, think through and see which system will be better for the nation. And then we only have the national interest at heart and we all debate the issues so that if we are going if we choose that this is the way to go even introducing multipartism at the district assembly or local level structures is the way to go how do we get there there's a whole difference between an end state you want to achieve and the road that will lead you there mm. we don't see even the end state they have said they want to achieve mm -hmm. The road they have chosen is also not leading them there. It's like you want to go to Kumasi and you are seen on a flower road. <laughs> so we want to. <laughs> no, no, I think we have to go. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. <laughs> so you heard the general, general secretary of the opposition National Democratic Congress. I am not out there uh, campaigning or doing anything to want to become. A running mate very because well. you don't file nominations for running mate it is a choice that is <laughs> very well so that's how we conclude today's edition of point black and eyewitness news on 97.3 city fm you just heard johnson i in ketia general secretary of the opposition national democratic congress production work has been done by six to don ulo